I've had this question quite a bit. It's a really good question. It's probably the number one question that any person interested in bison or buffalo would ask. What is the difference between bison and buffalo? I'm gonna try to help you and uh, we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Okay, first things first. We need to go way back. We need to go way back and to where the first uh, Europeans came over here. And so the Europeans kind of started taking over uh, the North American continent. Um, what we know is, is the US particularly. And so as they started coming over here and checking everything out, um, they saw this animal. Uh, this big beast, you know, roaming out by the millions. And um, what they knew of this animal, that they were used to seeing this big, brown, you know, burly beast um, out here grazing, you know, naturally and looking all majestic and stuff. Um, they were used to them and they thought that buffalo. And the, when they said that, um, what they're referring to, or what they thought that our buffalo, these buffalo were, was, was the Cape and water buffalo, which is in the Eastern Hemisphere. And uh, so you're talking, you know, there's, there's places in Africa and there's places in Europe where the Cape and the water buffalo are located. And so they were used to seeing this big beast of an animal. And you know, the Cape buffalo and the water buffalo are both very large mammals. Um, and when you first look at them, uh, this is what you see. And I hate to say it, but if you Google buffalo now, um, and, you know, on Google, and you look at uh, the, some of the images, uh, you'll see Cape Buffalo and you'll see Water Buffalo come up. And uh, that's, that's right, because those are Buffalo. They're not our Buffalo, but um, so when the first peoples were over here and you know, they were seeing this animal, that's where they got it. They started calling them Buffalo, referring to what they were used to in Europe and in Africa. And so what happened is this common name of buffalo started to surface. It started to being passed along and that's what people referred to them as. And as you know, history tells itself, the numbers grew, uh, more people kept coming from Europe. And so uh, that word just kept going and that common name was referred to as buffalo. All right, so even the natives um, had their own common name for the bison. Maya, get over here. Sit, sit down. We don't do that, stay. All right, so the natives even had their common name for, for buffalo as well, and that was from the English term uh, that was brought over. And so whenever people started calling that, it even spread to the Native Americans. And so let me talk about kind of today and, and what I hear is, you know, when you grow up, the very first thing that you hear is the word buffalo. And it's totally fine. That's what you've heard. That's what you hear in television. Um, that's what you hear in the media. People refer to them um, as buffalo. We always have. Um, but now that the bison or buffalo is starting to kind of get spread more in the US and and people are starting to know more about them and the reason that is is because not too long ago 
Uh, a couple years ago, the bison, the American bison, became our national mammal. And there's a reason behind that. You guys know that the bison um, almost became extinct um, in the late 1800s. And, uh, you know, it was a survivor. And, uh, you know, it, it, it got through the tough times with, uh, you know, a lot of good conservationists um, noticing this. And, and even a, a really good president by the name of Teddy Roosevelt noticing this and trying to put a lot of effort towards saving these majestic animals. And, you know, almost 100 years later, uh, we've, got, we've got them as our national mammals, which is awesome. Talking about, uh, you know, this common name, today it's still used. I go to a lot of uh, bison conferences, uh, you know, meetings, and, and you still hear that name, you know, being spread around. Buffalo. Uh, you see a lot of people's uh, ranches named, you know, Buffalo Ranch, and, and uh, you hear bison. Mine are obviously bison, uh, because when I jumped into this, I just felt like I wanted to go ahead and give it the the true name. So let's break it down a little bit. So you have buffalo, which is a common name. And then you have what the genus species is of American bison is bison bison. That is the genus species of these animals right here. It is a bison bison, um, and which we just call them bison. Uh, that is the American bison. Um, if you go way back, there's a couple of other different species of bison, but um, the real true, um, what we have today is just American bison, which we call bison. Um, so you've got common name uh, that was spread a long time ago, and then you have the actual scientific name. Also, just kind of a common name today is bison. And... Uh, you know what? It's okay. You can call it either one. If you want to get technical, you call them bison. You hear me say bison. But at the end of the day, they're the same animal um, of the American bison. You just can't get it confused, uh, okay, with the water buffalo or the cape buffalo over, you know, in Europe and places like that. So, don't feel bad. It's okay. You're talking about still the coolest dog gum animal okay it doesn't matter it's fine okay but it's bison or buffalo don't be afraid to call it buffalo you're not wrong just don't get it confused with cape or water um buffalo so even in one of my favorite movies which you know i talked about i even named my bull after him um so in dances with wolves you even hear that and that was a very popular movie in the early early 90s um, and you guys know that that movie um, really kind of got me inspired with the whole connection with Native Americans and bison. I just love those kind of movies. Any movie, uh, you know, Kevin Costner in is great. Uh, if you already haven't seen, watch Yellowstone because it's really good. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you hear, um, he's known as Lieutenant Dunbar in that movie. Uh, but, you know, there's the whole famous scene where he's sitting down. I'm talking to that uh, friendly tribe that he's trying to create a bond with and they're sitting down um, drinking coffee. This is one of my favorite scenes. Um, you know, he, he, puts a, he puts a jacket and a shirt and he hum, hunches over and he's, you know, doing the whole Tatanka thing and, you know, we always laugh about it and stuff. But um, and that's a funny scene because he's, he's acting out to try to, you know, portray, hey, buffalo, where are the buffalo? Uh, but you hear them say that, and the, the Sioux guy says, Buffalo, buff. Um, <laughs> funny scene, one of my favorite scenes. But, you know, it's stuff like that where we've heard them before, and, you know, we, you see that in the movies and you see it in the media, and so it's okay. That's been laid out for us as the term Buffalo. If you ask me what I would prefer, and I'm just about this big in the whole bison world, I would say bison. Uh, the name of our magazine cover, uh, the name of our um, National Bison Association, it, it all has the word bison in it. We try to stay technical. Um, but when you go to those associations, you still hear that term being passed around. Don't, I mean, 
I am not an expert at this. I am not a really great historian. This is what I've learned as I've grown up. Um, this is what I've learned from teaching Oklahoma history and just, you know, being in this over a year and a half now. So I'm not an expert at the bison versus buffalo, but this is what I've learned and talked to people and picked up in books um, that I've read and just tried to pay attention to. So, um, you know, I'm not perfect at it, but this is what I know to be uh, buffalo versus bison. And I just gave you the pretty short version of that. So I hope that I helped you do, I hope I helped you understand what the difference is. Um, just compared to our American bison to the Cape and the water buffalo, um, you know, if you just stick with uh, in the term American bison, if you want to call them bison buffalo, it's okay. So people ask, well, what kind of bison do you have? Well, let me break it down. There's two types of bison in America. Um, there's plains bison, which is this, are these guys. And then there is the wood bison. Let me show you what the difference is between wood bison and plains bison. Okay, so on the woods bison, you've got the hump that comes up a little bit more forward, like you see here on Dakota. <coughs> All right, so on wood bison, they live up in the north. Um, you're gonna see them in Canada for sure, uh, but they also will be <coughs> up into, uh, you know, they can be up into Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and some of those northern United States. They're a little bit bigger than the Plains Bison and uh, their hump comes forward. They uh, have a lot more kind of hair up in the front. It's not as throwy. It's not as uh, curly up in the front. It's, it's a little shaggier up in the front. Kind of a uh, you know long straight hair I guess you could say. Um, if you talk to some Woods Bison people which I know some up in Canada, some good people up there, they can tell you a little bit more about the difference between woods and plain, plains bison. Mine are plains bison, um, so the ones that uh, you know you saw in the movies and uh, the traditional, you know, uh, the plains Indians, Native Americans hunting, uh, the, the bison, uh, those are these bison. Uh, you're gonna find those woods bison up uh, far north. You're not going to hardly see any down this way, uh, really, but um, not a huge difference. They're still bison. Uh, they're just woods and plains. So you've got your genus species of bison, bison, and then you've got a kind of two subgroups here, or two different groups of, of American bison. All right, guys, I hope I've helped you today. I hope that I've taught you a little bit more about bison, and I hope that you know, a little bit, at least, uh, <laughs> the difference between buffalo and bison. And um, you know what? At the end of the day, they're the same animal. Just don't get it confused with those other buffalo over in Europe. Um, but uh, it's the same thing. People know what you're talking about. And now, um, if people ask, you can correct them if you want. You can say, no, it's bison. I'm sorry that it's taken me this long. I kind of covered a bunch of other stuff and I, you know, it's okay to get back to the basics um, just like I have to do in teaching and coaching. You, every now and then you got to do that. And so, um, you know, I'm 12 or 13 videos in, 13 videos in, and we're just now talking about bison versus buffalo. These are interesting animals and there's so much history about them that you can really get into if you want to read about. Um, but feel free to ask me any questions. Not an expert at this. Um, but if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. So hope you guys enjoyed the video today, taking you back kind of into the classroom a little bit. Um, being a teacher, you know, it's, it's kind of natural to do that. So, um, but I hope you learned something today. Um, follow us on Instagram or Facebook, Cross Timbers Bison. And uh, if you already haven't subscribed to YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys very much.
All right, starting over. <laughs> okay, I got some good news for you. So I've been telling you, I've been leaving you out to dry. Um, we've got some t-shirts. They are printed and ready to go. So I'm gonna give you the directions on how you can get one of these. It's exactly like this. It's, um, it's what my family wears um, and I wear all the time. So how you can do this is you, I'll put the link down at the bottom here and um, you can go to my website. It's www.crosstimbersbison.com and you'll be able to order um, your t-shirt if you'd like to on there. Um, just email me if you have any problems or anything and uh, we'll have them on there for you. All the information's on there. You can check out our website while you're on there. Uh, we've got links to Facebook and Instagram and my YouTube on there as well. So you guys go ahead and get on there and look if you'd like to. If you'd like to get a t-shirt, um, they're super soft shirts. I love these um, shirts. They're Bella Canvas. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's okay. Uh, just trust me. These are really soft shirts. I love wearing them. And um, yeah, so there you go. If you guys want it, uh, go ahead and... Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. I have some really cool footage for you today. Um, I've never seen any sort of footage like this before. It's just coincidentally, you know, I had my GoPro sitting down and this is what happened. Check this out. Hey guys, welcome back. Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Just out here checking on the herd, checking on the little bulls. I got, it's a little nap time, I just fed them, so they're happy and, and plump. So it's kind of like that nap time after lunch. You're like, oh, just ate lunch and now you're full. I know it's that hard time of the day. That's kind of where they're at right now. But hope you guys have been doing good. Everything is good here. It's really good because everything is gotten greener again we've uh, since we built the hay we've gotten quite a few uh, inches of rainfall and so that's really good and exciting and I know the bison love it um, because they love that fresh green grass it's they can still get late in the summer whenever uh, we know that fall is knocking on the door and that green grass will disappear um, like you saw on my, one of my previous videos but luckily um, some of the heat has escaped Oklahoma just for a brief moment and we're loving it here and uh, I know that the bison are too but uh, finally got some cooler temperatures and, and some rainfall so that's always good um, but you know I just uh, I uh, have kind of had the GoPro out just trying to get some good footage of them I love just sitting out here and watching them they're just they're just fun animals to watch and they're just so curious I I mean, they're like a goat. I don't know if you've ever been around a goat before, um, yeah, but they are just, they're so curious. So I have the GoPro sitting down and um, I can watch it on my phone. And so I'm just sitting here watching them and uh, almost every single one of them go by and sniff it, smell of it, lick it, just to check it out. Because these animals spend so much time out in these pastures uh, they know wherever every nook and cranny kind of is. And so um, this was something new out there. And uh, they sh didn't take them long to find it. And they found that GoPro and they had to go check it out. So I've got some good footage of that I'm going to show you today.
Now how cool is that to have baby bison calves come up that close to a GoPro? You're so up close and personal. <laughs> um, right there with that bison calf. Um, basically trying to eat the GoPro, uh, but it's crazy that we can see the inside of the baby bison's mouth. That's something we will probably never get to do unless you actually have them in a squeeze shoot and, and you have to do that but we should never have to do that so crazy good footage um natural footage of this just the baby calves being them just being little kids like just like us uh you know once when we were we were young um so curious like they are they want to smell everything and in this case maybe eat it or taste of it So you kind of see how curious these animals are. They want to know everything that's going on. They, uh, they're just, they're so interesting to watch and it's fun to sit there and um, just see kind of what, where their mind's going and, and what, their, what their focus is and what they're interested on. Um, that's, that's the fun part about being out here with them is uh, they just, they'll get into all kinds of stuff if you, if you just, if you would let them. Hey buddy, I still don't have any I'm sorry. Dunbar wants cues, but I've already fed him. He's he's eating like a hoss right now, which he needs it. Okay, I know. I'll bring you some cubes. Okay, so I got some exciting news. Um, we've finally named the bulls. Uh, we already had one pretty much named, uh, our very first one. Um, he was our firstborn calf ever from the cross timbers bison and uh, we named him Chaska. One of our uh, followers uh, kind of threw it out there in some comments after a video um, and so we're going to take it and run with it. Chaska means firstborn son and Sue and the reason I kind of I really like that is first of all uh, these those two mamas which are now uh, they came from the Quapaw Nation, um, like I've talked about several times. But they, uh, the Quapaw tribe is, I know there's many branches uh, or groups of Sioux, and this is one of them is Quapaw tribe. And so um, we kind of discovered that name um, through that, through those, some comments from a, from a follower, and I appreciate it. Um, and so we're going to run with Chaska for, for our firstborn bull and uh he's doing great both of them are doing really good um, on the second one we named him teddy because his mama 
is from Teddy Roosevelt National Park is where her bloodline comes from. And being able to have a, a, a bloodline or a bison from um, a national park and Teddy Roosevelt National Park out of all of them, that's so awesome. And I'm lucky to have that. Um, so um, we've got Chaska and we've got Teddy. Um, Teddy Roosevelt is one of my favorite um, um, presidents of all time. He did a lot of conservation. He was a big time hunter, um, but you know, he explored a lot of places in America and he wanted to protect them. And so um, we should be very thankful of, of people like Teddy Roosevelt. So why not name a baby bison calf after Teddy? As you can tell, the uh, baby bulls are doing awesome. They're so pretty. Um, you just, it's so cool to see how red they are and you can tell how they just um, stick out out here against this green grass but they're doing really good they're getting so big um, still milking on mom like normal which is what they should be doing um, i even caught them eating some feed um, which is good that's okay uh, they'll be eating feed at, at some point as they get older um, want to eat as much grass as possible okay get those natural nutrients in them uh, but you know, someday they'll, they'll, they'll eat some feed. So one of the questions I get is, what are you gonna do with these baby bulls? And uh, well, there's a couple of different things that you can do. Um, so you really, it takes a while to really see kind of what their confirmation is and um, how good of an animal are they gonna be. What I mean, what I mean by confirmation is, that can be several things, you know. Um, just their body structure and, and how they're built, uh, little details kind of, you know, that they have. Good genetics um, is, is a quick way of putting it. But we're, we just kind of will keep these um, little bulls for a while, see how they turn out. And, uh, you know, we're not in a hurry to make any decisions right now. Um, the, the ideal prime um, weight to take them to market or age to take them to market for meat purposes um, is like 18 months and then you know to like uh, 22 or 24 months so right about two years is kind of the optimal time to take them to the market if you want to uh, process them for meat um, I know that kind of scares some of you it's like no the poor little babies uh, <laughs> they're not gonna be babies then we wouldn't do nothing like that but um, you know that's part of that's part of this industry. I'm not there yet. People ask me, "What are you going to do with these animals?" Well, I don't have enough right now um, to have market animals, which is to process them for meat and sell for meat. I wish I could sell you guys some meat um, because it's so good. It's so good and it's so good for you. But I just I just don't have the operation for that right now. I mean, I have a young herd. Um, as you can tell, they only have two babies, and it takes about two years to really have um, animals that you want to market and, and sell for meat purposes. So we're not we're not in a hurry um, to do that. But you know, if uh, in a year or so, a year and a half, if these bulls look really good, um, we could possibly sell them for breeding purposes. Um, both of their mamas are really good mamas, and. Like I've talked to you about before, um, they're both from the Quapaw Nation. Um, one of them is uh, got bloodlines to Teddy Roosevelt National Park, uh, which is awesome. And um, it's so cool that we have that right here in our own small herd, um, which is really exciting. You know, I mean, we wanted we wanted some heifers, but didn't get heifers. That's okay. You know, we've got two little stud bulls here that are uh, really good looking bulls, and they're doing excellent right now. So. We're just happy to have babies, uh, you know, on the Cross Timbers farm. And, uh, but, you know, um, it, ideally you wanted heifers to uh, grow or expand your herd, which would have been awesome, and that's great. And, you know, if, if things work out right and Mother Nature takes its course, Dunbar is, as you know, the guy we're counting on. And, uh, you know, we could have... We could have several babies uh, next early summer or or spring, which would be really awesome. Um, so, pretty excited about that. That would be really cool to have, you know, 
five or six babies and that would be really good so so what i love about this tree right here okay this is called a black jack oak and um as part of my brand or the name of my herd cross timbers so um, a man never really explained what is cross timbers so cross timbers is an area in uh, eastern half kind of in the central part of Oklahoma where the prairie meets the forest is what it is called. And this is one of the dominant uh, deciduous trees that occurs here in our region. It's a line that um, stretches all the way up to northern Oklahoma down in even Texas. And it's kind of that central kind of eastern part of the state where uh, the trees and the hardwoods of eastern Oklahoma meet the Great Plains essentially. And you know, this is one of my favorite trees. It's, uh, it's a blackjack oak, like I said, but um, the blackjack oak and the post oak are two of the um, most common and dominant deciduous trees, hardwood trees of the cross timbers region in Oklahoma. And uh, as you can tell, it's uh, well used um, uh, for some really good shade in the hot summertime, but it's just a really cool, pretty tree that we have out here. And this was kind of one of the things that uh, really kind of made me, you know, come up with the idea of cross timbers bison. I want to describe something for Oklahoma and, you know, and something related to where our farm is and where these bison are today. And that big blackjack oak is one of the reasons that represents this cross timbers herd and just the cross timbers region in Oklahoma. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, I know it's been a while since I gave you a checkup on the baby bulls, but they're doing awesome. They're getting so big and uh, they're starting to lose their color, you know, um, on the kind of their knees is what we would call it or uh, some down their midline or the tips of their ears and around their nose. Uh, some of that brown or dark color is coming in and it's really pretty um, to kind of have like a highlight through all that red, there's a black coat underneath there that's starting to sneak through there. But uh, these little guys here are doing awesome and uh, they're just fun to watch. They're, they're, they're learning from, from mamas and uh, just checking everything out just like they do. So, but uh, if you already haven't, come follow us on Instagram or and Facebook. Subscribe to us on here. Um, we Our t-shirts are up. Um, I've already sold some and you guys, uh, if you're interested in buying a cross timber t-shirt, uh, go ahead and you can go to my website. It's down here on the link below. It's crosstimbersbison.com and you can get you a t-shirt um, and rock it out if you'd like. Um, also, my sister, which is DJ from DJ um, from Arms Family Homestead, um, her and Daniel came out here this past week and um, my sister, as you know, um, is a professional photographer. She's done this for a long time. She does a great job. She came out here, her and Daniel, and they took some photos of the bison. Um, I haven't had any really uh, real photography done by them. Um, been wanting to. And my sister came out here and she took a lot of photos of them and they are awesome. They look really good. She does a great job. And um, so if you're interested in going on and purchasing some of those photos, uh, you can. And you can check uh, her link. I'll put it here also for you um, at DJ Arms Photography. Uh, she does a great job and I'm proud of her. And um, I'm just very thankful to have somebody like her in my family. And so uh, you guys go on there and, and, and check it out. And uh, if you like any photos, go ahead and, and let her know and, and she'll get you taken care of. And I'll be posting some of those photos and, and, and get some out because they are really, really good photos. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Um, thanks for following us, our, our small little herd here in Southern Oklahoma. We, we really enjoy doing this. Thank you guys. guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. You know, one of the questions I always get besides 
what's the difference between bison and buffalo is do you have to have a permit to raise bison? What does it take to raise bison? So guys, what I want to talk to you about today is how to start a bison herd. Uh, there's no perfect way of doing this. I'll just tell you my experience and what I did. Um, I had a background in bison and obviously love this animal. And that experience um, back when I worked at the National Park Service kind of led me into um, you know, the influence of getting bison. And so that, first of all, was the encouragement of others and then just the influence of my background history with these animals. I wanted to be able to raise them. So I had the inspiration there and then encouragement of the family members and, and, my, and my wife to do something like this. And so that was a support system that I got that really helped a bunch. But there's several different things that I want to talk to you about today that will help you get started. And to be honest with you, uh, there's no special permit, uh, there's no special license or anything to raise bison. Uh, these are not exotic animals. Um, you know, you're not, you're not raising animals that are are from a zoo. I know there's bison in some zoos, but this is not an exotic animal. Um, this is a natural species that uh, occurs here. And uh, basically you just treat them, it's, it's kind of like cattle. Um, you, if, if you want to start raising cattle for whatever reason you want to start raising cattle for, you can do it. Uh, you don't have to have any special permit to raise bison. Uh, you don't have to set a special license or anything like that. You, if you want to do it, you can, um, as long as you have really good facilities, um, obviously to uh, contain the bison, good fencing, um, and you kind of have a background in it, it would, it would definitely help. Um, but to be honest with you, um, if you've had experience raising cattle, then, then you're not far off of, of raising bison. There are a couple of different things. Um, you know behavior differences and and different handling systems and and behaviors and more stress uh there there is a difference between raising cattle and raising bison but if you do want to raise bison um, it's not that difficult to start um, you just need to get in contact with somebody that raises bison um, maybe somebody in your local area and um, that's where it starts from there. If, you've had, if you have somebody local or somebody in your state um, that you can contact and start from there, that, that's probably the easiest way to do it. And they'll kind of point you in the right direction. I'll do whatever I can to help. I would love to help. Um, you know, I'm here in Oklahoma and I can answer any questions that you have for me. That's not a problem. Uh, you know, I just, I got mine. I got in contact with a guy and I was just really lucky because this guy happened to be a big time bison guy and uh, he's 30 minutes down the road from our farm and so I was just really lucky and I got a hold of um, Doc Parsons and and he pointed me in the right direction um, but I had experience raising bison I say raising them taking care of them handling them um, with my experience in the National Park Service um, when I was in college. So I had some experience there and I wasn't really uh, scared to raise them or be in the pen with them at all. Obviously a little nervous when you buy your own herd, but it's a little bit different. But uh, you can do it. You can definitely raise your own bison. Um, okay, those are not bison, but those back there are bison. I don't know what's going on here. But 
Anyways, uh, you're, you can, you're more than welcome to get in contact with me if you would like to raise a bison. Um, it, if, you, if you have some experience raising cattle or, or bison in general and um, you want to expand, go for it. I, I uh, encourage you to do so. They're amazing animals and uh, they're fun to watch. They're just absolutely fun to watch. They're hanging out down here in our bottom pasture and um, just enjoying life. Another resource that you can reach out to is the National Bison Association. It is a great um, association. Uh, when I go to the conferences, the bison conferences, there's a summer conference and then there's a winter conference. Uh, the winter conference is in Denver. My wife and I attended the last year, had a great time. But you can even get on the website and you can get contact information there. And that will be very helpful um, if you're interested in raising bison. That's actually a good start. And you can branch off from there and figure out, uh, you know, maybe who's in your area. Maybe there's somebody local that raises bison. Um, maybe you've driven down the road and seen a bison herd. You know, if you can figure out who owns those bison, maybe that's a good start. Um, somebody within your state um, that raises bison. But you can always go to the National Bison Association. Look online. Uh, I believe it's www.bisoncentral.com. Dot com and you can go on that website and get a lot of good information and there's a lot of good contact information on there as well Good for something, huh, Eleanor? Does that feel good? What do you got in your hair? Hey guys, I hope I helped you out today. I uh, hope that I've encouraged you with some of my videos to raise bison. Um, it's not for everyone. I hope that you guys understand that um, these animals are very different uh, than cattle. They're different than any sort of livestock that if you've ever raised livestock before. Um, they're a very unique animal. They're a special animal. And uh, they have character. Um, they uh, are very, very social animals, which that's so interesting about them, um, which that's one of the things that just will attract you to them. It's just how social they are. They have this, this, this family and you know, they, you can see how they interact with each other and, and even me as well and my family when we're out here. Um, but take your time um, and see if this is the right thing for you. Go visit a bison farm go and see how they operate. Um, you can go to a large scale bison farm or you can go to a small scale bison farm. Obviously mine is smaller. I started out small and the, that's fine with me. I think this is easier to start out this way. And by the way, Ted Turner started out with a very small bison herd as well. And he's the largest bison producer in, in the world. So it's okay to start out small, but, um, Use your resources, um, dig into it and get as much information as you can. Go visit a farm, that's the best thing to do. See how it all operates, see how they do things and, and make a decision from there. And uh, you know, have a, have a good background 
of, of raising animals. That would be a good start. And uh, you have to have good property uh, with, that provides good grass and um, obviously good fencing, which um, I'm going to talk to you about in an upcoming video. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope I've encouraged you to, to raise some bison um, and I hope I've at least drawn some interest to you um, to do that. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, you guys can contact me. Um, you can go to my website, crosstimmersbison.com. Um, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, if you already haven't, follow us along and check out our small herd here in Southern Oklahoma. Thank you guys so much. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. We're right in the middle of breeding season and I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff that Dunbar is portraying. He's our only bull out here and this is his first breeding season. It's our three young heifers, first time uh, for breeding season, our two-year-old heifers. And so we've got a lot of action going on around the Cross Timbers farm. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so um, we're right in the middle of breeding season and um, you know, probably got um, a solid month and a half maybe left. Um, this morning I've noticed um, Dunbar is escorting um, Bell Star around. So um, that's, a, that's a good sign. You know, he'll, uh, during this time, he'll kind of single his heifer or cow out and um, you know, kind of squirt her around and, and fall around and he'll smell of her and he'll, he'll try to breed her every now and then. I haven't actually seen him breed any of these heifers yet or, or the cows, but, uh, you can definitely see some signs of the breeding season and, uh, he's, uh, he's just do, being natural and doing his thing. Uh, but you can definitely see the signs of, of what he's trying to do. So, there's a good chance that she's in heat. They, sh they should be in heat right now, or they've all been in, he in heat. So um, we won't ever really know, um, you know, if he's bred them or not, not until we start to see the signs later on, um, unless we, you can do ultrasounds. Once you work them and, and get them in the squeeze chute, you can do some ultrasounds, but I don't have that technology yet. Maybe someday I will. Um, but uh, that's really the only way to tell if they're pregnant or not or um, you know when it gets closer to birthing season you can see signs as those um, those heifers or cows um, you can kind of tell if they're pregnant or not so but we won't know for a long time really until until that baby comes out um, like ours did in June and July this year which is pretty late but so right in the middle of breeding season it's a good time got in your hair buddy Dunbar's got some cockle burrows in his hair oh uh, some morning kisses my big boy 
So what normally happens when I feed them is Dunbar, our bull, he usually eats by himself. He, he kind of takes a hold of his own trough and does his own thing, um, which is fine. He's, he's got to bulk up um, and put on some weight and keep putting on that weight, especially in the middle of breeding season when a lot of bulls are, are working pretty hard. Uh, they can lose a little, little bit of weight. But, uh, you know, this morning I was talking about um, how he's been escorting Bell Stall around, and this morning they chose to eat breakfast together. I thought it was cute. He usually doesn't like to share at all. <laughs> Got a helper today. Are you helping, Maya? Huh? Are you helping? Yeah. Dunbar is not having a fight with any other bulls or mature bulls like you, you've probably seen on Yellowstone or any of those um, shows where you can see bison in those big national parks um, fighting for that dominance. He's only two years old, so uh, he is the dominant bull out here, and which is a good thing. So um, I, I have noticed some of his traits of, of running other heifers off. I've noticed him um, chasing the calves off a little bit, and that's just his dominance of showing that he is the main guy and um, you know he's trying to breed where we are right smack into the middle of this breeding season and um, you know he gets to do his thing which uh, we just let mother nature take its course and it's just fun to watch him as he as he does his thing and so just being a bull and hopefully he's getting all these heifers bred so like I said I, I haven't actually got to see him get any of these heifers bred but um, he's doing a really good job of getting uh, cockle burls in his hair that's for sure aren't you buddy unfortunately uh, we have cockle burl weeds here and we've try, already tried to spray them once and we just got to stay on top of them so so here's kind of a perfect example of what's going on is as you've got Dunbar out here singling up one of uh, that's actually one of the cows who just had bulls and you can kind of see once he singles out his heifer or cow um you know this is the testing moment it could last a couple hours could last a couple of days of whether um, she's going to allow him to breed or not so uh, this is where some of that dominant behavior comes in of where i've actually seen him run off uh the other cow and i've actually seen him run off um you know a couple of the calves actually um, showing that dominance that he normally wouldn't do but uh, this is an important time for him and um, you know he's 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 trying to uh, escort his girl around and, and try to you know um, do his thing so um, and hopefully he's able to do that with these heifers um, ideally it would be really really good um, to have to have uh, you know five babies uh, come this spring you know we had our first two here at the cross timbers ranch this spring and uh you know right in the middle of breeding season um hopefully he's getting all five of these um our three heifers bred and then the two cows um bred you know he's he's two years old going on three this spring uh this coming spring and uh that means he can breed you know along with these these um heifers we've got eleanor bell star and peaches uh, they're also two years old. They're my part of my original uh, first herd, and it'll be their first time to go through breeding season here um, on this ranch. So, um, as far as the um, cows, we got Quapaw Dakota. This will be their second go around, but it'll be their first time, hopefully, being bred by Dunbar because um, Chaska and Teddy are two little bull calves. That are having fun in the background over there um they uh they're from a different dad i don't know exactly what it is i uh, remember quapaw and dakota um came from the quapaw tribe up in northeastern oklahoma and oh looky there <laughs> my dog <laughs> um it just got ran off by dunbar so there you go there's a perfect example just my blue healer out here in the middle of pasture with me thinks she's a bison dog, but she ain't look at him. He is not liking this situation right here. 
Uh, Maya, you better get over here. Come here, Maya. She's like, screw that. I ain't going close to him. Oh, now he's gonna come check me out. We've got a lot going on here. <laughs> yeah, say hi. Hi. Hi, wasabi. Hey. Wasabi. What do you guys think about the bison? Really cool. Really cool. Besides the babies, they're the most cool ones. Of course. They're changing colors. You notice that? Yeah. Wait, that one too. Look at it. What is That's it? Eleanor. She has been... Bad. She's been rubbing on a tree. Here. Why don't I do this? I'm going to get those cubes. Eleanor. And then we're, we can feed Eleanor. Oh, Eleanor will eat. Isn't you want me to do it? Here, put, put it in there. Stick your hand through there. <laughs> yeah. See? There you go. Oh, See? she dropped it. Y'all do the long one. Come here, Bell See? Star. Bell Star. Did she do it? Oh. Bell Star? There you go. She ate it. Is this one That's Bell Peaches. Star? Is this one Bell Star? No. No, not, she's not over here. Bell you guys, these are the two of the sweetest ones. Well, I'll say that, and then. They start to fight. And then. Hey, Eleanor. 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 Oh, dang. You gotta push it in there, man. I tried. No, you gotta put your hand through the panel. She won't hurt you at all. Come here. She won't hurt you. There you go. See, that worked. Good job. It barely even touched me. Good job. She barely even touched me. Because I'm thinking to feed this one now. Oh, look at that tongue. <laughs> Will the babies eat these cubes? I don't know yet, Jacoby. Baby, Maybe so. Come here. There's your bull. What's the baby? Oh, is this, is this one Bell Star? Nope, that's Peaches. 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 Is Peaches the nicest one? She's nice. Eleanor's the sweetest, though. Peaches. 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 You want one? You want one? Peaches. You want one? Whoa. Gosh. Why are you scared? Yeah. What are you scared of? I the tongue. Huh? Yeah, the tongue. Oh. It's really hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like sensitive. No. It's rough, isn't it? <laughs> He got him full. Is hand. it rough, Jacoby? Yeah. Yeah, it is. You want it? Do you want it or not? You gotta put it through there. You're... Oh my gosh! It's so, so scared. Put it in there. She can't reach through there. Wildlife at its best. Bison, deer. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, just right in the middle of breeding season, and he's used to it. You're gonna do an ending for me? Yeah. Okay, we'll do it in just a second then. All right. So, um, but I hope you get to understand a little bit more about how at least Dunbar works here on a small farm here, just a young bull, um, and some of the the. The traits that he's carrying and his uh, his behavior. I noticed he's been beating a lot of uh, um, some of the weeds or some of the shrubs that we have here in this in this specific lot. Um, just showing that dominance that he has. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy seeing kind of how they interact together and how he kind of singles out his his ladies. And um, you know, Mother Nature takes his course, hopefully and and um, everything's taken care of and hopefully he's breeding these these heifers and some of these cows but since we do have a couple of guests out here we're gonna let them do a formal 
ending for us that we don't always get. We've got uh, Houston from Arms Family Homestead and we got our boy Jacoby out here hanging out with me checking the bison. Um, if you already haven't followed us on um, YouTube, you can follow us at Cross Timbers Bison. Um, I've got some hats made now if you're interested in a hat uh, and of course our t-shirts as well. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and just follow us our, our little small herd along as, uh, as we're going through the, the summer getting into the fall. So guys, what do you think? Yeah, you see they're super excited about bison. Sorry they're not goats, but they're still pretty cool though, aren't they? Yeah. Alright guys, go ahead and end it for us. So guys, if you haven't right now, subscribe, ring the notification bell, like it, and we'll see you on the next video. Amen. Boom. You wonder why you get cockleburrows. Get out of there. So this is Peaches. See what's on Peaches' forehead? That's what we're going to work on today. We call those cockleburrows, and they get stuck in just about everything. Obviously, the bison, you can see the fresh ones, the green ones that they've been rubbing on. And all they're doing is simply pushing that weed back so they can get to grass. And those cockleburrows get stuck in everything. Even if I walk by them, they'd be stuck to our pants. And I can't stand them. I want them gone. And so today, my wife and I, Marissa, we're gonna go out and we're gonna spray these dadgum weeds and get try to get rid of these cockleburrows. Just as big as each other. You know it? Well, hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty Baker. Behind the camera today is my wife, Marissa. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, we are going to spray some weeds today out in one of our big pastures. Um, as you can tell, we're having some issues with what we call cockleburrows. Um, that's the common name that we call them and uh, you can see those nasty things that are getting matted um, on the bison no they're not ticks they're just it's a simple uh, sticker and it's a pretty good size sticker and I absolutely hate them I cannot stand these things um, and my family knows I hate them because I hate seeing them stuck to my bison and there's nothing I can do to get them out once they're in there um, it's not like I can go up and pick them pick them off like it's my dog or anything so um, the only way to really get these things out is to run them through the chute and, and comb them out and that would still even then be a tough process and I know the bison wouldn't really go for that so a way to reduce these is what we're gonna do is we've already fed the bison since they're up here and we are going to rotate pastures uh, I've got a, a lot um, that has been rested for about uh, 20 plus days now and we've we've shut it off from the bison as part of our um, rotation system we shut it off it's had time to recover there's some uh, more growth in there now and so we're gonna shut off the big pasture which is where they've been which is where they've been getting all these cockleburrows from and we're gonna shut them off and then we're gonna move them into one of our uh, pastures that has been kind of, uh, it's had some time to heal and grow some fresh grass that the bison will love.
right, so we're out here in a big pasture. And so if you want to come take a close look, this is what we're doing with. I don't know where this thing come from, but this is my least favorite plant probably in the world. This thing absolutely sucks. So here is what the cockabro is. And it is sharp and it is pointy. And look at all those fine hairs and a lot of, um, just a lot of stickers basically here. And this is just one plant. This is just one plant. We're gonna get into batches of them. I absolutely hate these things and they get all over the bison and they'll stick to just about anything they'll stick to your dogs they'll stick to your clothes and so we're gonna try to get rid of these today so the bad part about these cockaburros is once they attach to a host which could be a dog be a cow obviously our bison so once it attaches to a host and those bison move and they go somewhere else they dust on the ground they roll around they lay down once that cockleburrow falls off there goes the seed and so that's how these things really spread unfortunately they'll attach to just about it anything and then when they fall off and they could fall off you know far away from where the plant starts, there you have a reseed and it starts all over again. Today, I'm going around with just a simple hand sprayer and knocking out these and we'd rather do this than spray the whole field. Um, you've got direct contact, direct spraying right here on each plant. It's gonna take longer and a little bit more labor but I'd rather do it this way than spray the entire field. So this is the best way to do it, um, in my personal opinion. Um, I know some of you are going, oh, he's spraying herbicide, freaking out, because the bison will be in here, but we give this thing plenty of time to recover. We'll give this up to from a week to, to two weeks. And, and really all it needs for that herbicide to settle in is 48 hours, and that's, that's still plenty of time. But we're going to give this lot um, probably a week or two to really kill these off and get that herbicide away. So we're not taking really any risk at all. Um, so it's, we're going to have plenty of time um, for this pasture to recover. Um, it's not everywhere, but it's sparingly spread out and we're going to attack the big portion of it. Burnt this thing, none of this stuff will come around. Use a natural way. Burn the sucker. So when you take a look at these plants, I mean I'm barely six foot and I mean that's that's above my knees. But when you take a look here, every single one of these plants has, I don't know, twenty to thirty of these cockerbrows. And inside the cockerbrows are two seeds. And so do the math. That's a lot of seeds that are spreading out in these pastures. It's not very hard to spread these things, spread these things especially when they die. Um, like today, it's a little windy here in Oklahoma, like it always is. But um, those things will fly and they'll just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. So here we have some of the dead ones. As you can tell, this plant will start to die and they'll turn brown. The first thing that they do is they'll fall to the ground, like here. Just like so. Right there. 
once they've fallen and there they're seated right there so look all these dead plant material stuck to them so this one is starting to die look at that that is nasty so what i've heard is velcro came from these weeds this um, sticker um, and it makes total sense that velcro could come to this because these things I mean, they'll just they stick together they stick to just about anything here are some fresh ones We have green grass out here. This is this is Bermuda, and the bison do eat this grass um, up here in one of our top big pastures. Um, so we can't really burn, and um, so uh, the best time to burn is, is in the fall or in the spring. And maybe if I can talk my stepdad into it, we can burn this pasture and, and hopefully get rid of a lot of these weeds. And starting with these right here, um, fire can do some amazing things. To me. a lot of fresh grass up and regenerate you know a lot of that natural grass that occurs here uh, that the bison absolutely love so um, that's another method that you can use obviously can't burn because it's we're getting in the fall and we've got a lot of green grass and that's what the bison need is green grass so this is just something that we're gonna have to deal with it's part of it um, part of this whole acreage that we have here is using the bison to kind of um, consume those grasses and bring back some of that natural grass. These bison, as they go through here and they trample on this grass and they pee and they poop on it, they're actually doing it a favor. They're shoving a lot of that good nutrients and those seeds back into the soil every time that they travel through here and they're grazing. And so, um, as we use that throughout these pastures, you know, over time, it'll take a little time, we'll get rid of a lot of this kind of stuff and bring back some of these natural grasses that occur here in southern Oklahoma. Okay, so here we have some cockaburras that, some of that are already dying, and then here we have some fresh ones, but, um, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna know what these things feel like, it's basically like um, Velcro. I mean, these things stick together. I, I mean, just like Velcro. Look, even the fresh ones stick to it. But they're, they're just a lot more pointy. Um, I mean, if you squeeze too hard, they'll, I mean, they'll, they'll get into your skin pretty good. So, um, absolutely um, something that we don't want here. And So a perfect example of peaches right here that has lots and lots of cocker barrels on her head. And uh, I feel bad for them. I know it's just part of it. Uh, this exotic and invasive species of, of weed that we have. Kind of frustrated that we have these on our bison. It's part of having, um, you know, animals. It's part of having a farm. And those are some of the things that you have to deal with. And we'll take it, unfortunately. They'll be stuck to the bison for a while, at least some of them, like peaches here. But um, so when you see uh, these cockle burrows in the video, you'll know hopefully what I'm talking about now. That's basically sticking Velcro in, in your hair is all it is. And they'll keep them for a while. Uh, when they shed next spring into summer, that's when they'll kind of fall off. And unfortunately, they'll reseed from there. But hopefully we'll be able to do some burning, if I can talk um, a stepdad into it. 
we can hopefully do some burning and get rid of these cockleburrows. Well, hope that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not a lot of the bison. Um, not really happy um, with what's all over their face right now with the cockleburrows. Um, this is just one of the things that we have to deal with um, when you when you let your bison out into new pastures, uh, pastures that they haven't really spent a lot of time in. And so this is just part of some of the things you have to deal with on a farm. And hopefully spraying them will help a little bit. Um, I think in the end, um, maybe in the fall or in the spring, we're able to burn that pasture, um, which is something that I love to do. Um, maybe we can do that and maybe everything will get cleaned up and the bison will love that fresh grass that'll come up in the spring and early summer. But anyways, if you haven't subscribed to us, uh, follow us on YouTube, Across Timbers Bison, and follow us on Facebook or Instagram and uh, just stay in touch with us. If you have any questions, So one of the things I always try to do is I try to get Eleanor her own trough, as you can see here. Hers is singled out kind of away from all the main feeding troughs that we have. I like to make sure that she's getting um, some feed too. And plus she's just the sweetest. She is the sweetest heifer that, um, that we have or out of all of our bison. But there's definitely some Definitely some hierarchy and some pecking order with these animals. And so we try to make sure all of them are getting taken care of as much as we can. I know I haven't talked about it much, but there is a pecking order in this small bison herd. These animals are so social, um, and there's definitely a system that they have. Um, it really started with um, our two most dominant, well, they're mamas now, so they're cows. It started with them, really. Uh, when we brought them into this pasture and with this herd, they were older. They were already three years old. Uh, they were bred and so and plus they were just bigger and so they really took over in this in this small herd from our original four um, bison that we had um, so it really kind of changed the dominant the dominance here and the hierarchy uh, the bulls pretty much been the most dominant and and he will be as he gets older especially as he can contest with some of these older cows um, Bell Star, our largest heifer of the original herd, is one of the most aggressive and was the dominant um, in the herd for a while. And then Dunbar, our bull, has caught up to her. And um, obviously it's breeding season, so that dominance is really um, shown and exploited here. But um, it's really crazy to see how these animals work and, and coincide with each other and how there really is a dominant system place and that takes place everywhere i mean it that takes place in all the the big ranches all of the um, national parks that you see yellowstone that pecking order takes place in all of these um, it's really easy to tell in mind just because 
of uh, how small my herd is. But um, even in a, a small herd of eight with those two calves, uh, there is a pecking order, and it's just really interesting to watch and see. Um, but definitely those two quapaw heifers are, are two of the most aggressive. Plus, they have babies right now, and I think some of that dominance and that protection mode comes in when we're talking about the pecking order. When we're up here feeding, um, the bull runs off. Uh, he's, he's got his own trough over there. And you can kind of watch and see who kind of takes control in this corral and this feeding area that we have. But our two quapaw heifers for sure take control. So this is Bell Star. She's one of our more dominant, more aggressive heifers. And then here's Peaches. And then one of our favorites, Eleanor. Eleanor unfortunately has become one of the um, less dominant um, animals of this herd. She's kind of the weak leak, unfortunately. Um, she was one of the largest when she first got here. The Eleanor is now kind of on the lower side of things, even though she's the sweetest. Eleanor has been kind of pushed to the side, and she's one of the weaker ones of the group of this pecking order, unfortunately. Here's an example right here. I guarantee you watch this. And just like that. Bellstar comes in and kicks Eleanor out. Let's see if she'll let her eat with her. Oh, but here's the most dominant of them all. And there you go. You've got Quapaw. Quapaw and Dakota are the two most aggressive out of all of them and there's another example right there so there there's your winner there's your winner right there that is dakota and there's teddy falling a lot of wrong right along with her so i think your winner's right here the most dominant besides the bull he's pretty dominant now he's the largest hey guys well i hope you enjoyed the video today i uh i hope you understand a little bit more about the uh the pecking order and these bison and that that takes takes part in every bison herd there is uh, across north america um, but um, it's just part of the system uh, these animals are very very social animals and it's fun to just kind of watch how their family works and how their system works and and they and they, you know, they, they fight just like, just like families do. And, and, and so you can kind of see that order and, and that management within the herd. So, um, but anyways, just, uh, a couple little things. So uh, we've got hats for sale on crosstimberbison.com on my website, as well as the t-shirts and you can get online and check that out. And if you haven't followed us, um, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, and you can check any of that stuff out. I've got a lot of good pictures up there. My sister took of the bison um, a couple months ago. So we're getting close. We've just about just about got that pad um, cleaned off. We're trying to get a lot of those cinder blocks gone, and then we've got some construction there. And then I'm going to get a shoot and get a alley system and we're gonna put this thing on there and um, we're gonna get our, our bison handling system put together one other thing I do want to say is we are hosting a bison sale um, it is part of the Oklahoma Bison Association um, I'm one of the, the officers on the Oklahoma Bison Association and we host a sale every year it's actually in my hometown uh, it's in Sulphur, Oklahoma. 
uh, we have a sail barn uh, um, here in Sulphur and it's really good and it's really set up for for what we do but we've got a lot of bison coming this year last year we had over uh, just a little under a hundred and then this year we have at least a hundred coming this is going to be a, a much larger sale it's uh, November 2nd I believe it's on a Saturday and it's coming up pretty soon so uh, me and the other members of the uh, OBA are getting that thing ready and Hopefully, I'm going to take you on that journey with me when that happens. And it's November 2nd. If some of you are in Oklahoma or, in, or near us and you want to come see a show, come to a bison sale and you'll see some really interesting stuff go down. You'll see all kinds of different um, bison producers and, and some different bison as well. So it's, it's fun to watch and, and they bring every anything from from young baby calves six months old all the way to full-grown cows and bulls and so it's really interesting you can learn a lot at those sales and one of the things that i do um, is i go and work it so whenever people are bringing them in well got a dog plan um, i um, work it and I help get them in their um, certain pens and keep them separated and we uh, we identify them and do all the paperwork for them and get them ready for the sale so hope you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned with us thank you guys for following thank you for all the support and all the very positive comments that you guys leave thank you what do you have to say Stop it. Why are you angry? Huh? Why are you being angry? Are you, like, you must be upset because I don't have any cubes. You are upset. You like those bison in that park. It's called Yellowstone. Have you ever heard of it? Those people that go up there and never been around bison they're not like you well i don't know you get pretty angry sometimes those bison up there are different del star a little feisty you're over in their territory so i'm not hopping in there with you you little feisty oh fine there's no sense for this you're really upset i don't have any cubes that's yours this is mine okay i'm gonna let you be you just do your thing Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I know it's been a, just a little bit, it's been a minute or two, but um, we've been really busy. Um, we're in the grind of football season. We're getting down to just a couple more games left and hopefully make playoffs. Um, that's what we're shooting for. Uh, but as you can tell here, um, it is hay season. Um, in one of my videos you saw where we um, cut this hay Right out here in one of our own pastures, we got 33 bales of hay. It's the first time that we were able to um, get some hay out of our own pasture. And so that's good. We don't have to go buy any or we don't have to go find any from, from any other um, producers. Uh, but we've harvested our own hay right here. Um, so today um, I'm going to uh, get a bale of hay and we are going to feed the bison. Now, this is not just, you know... Just giving them hay and feeding them like like we do in our corral where we feed them grain and whatnot but this is different these bison get so excited when they have hay when there's this big bale of hay out there which these are these are decent sized bales of hay um they get super excited they rough this thing up they get in a fight with it they rub on it they scratch it and and then of course they'll eat it but um <laughs> It's just kind of a different thing. I know you're like, hey, what's what's this? It's just a bale of hay, right? They're just gonna eat it. Wait until you see what these bison do when they get their first bale of hay.
So one of the things that we're going to do today is we are going to give the bison their very first bale of hay. Uh, the grass is finally starting to die. Um, we found we we had a really really close to a a frost or a freeze last week. Uh, we finally are getting those fall temperatures that we love here in Oklahoma. It's it's beautiful. I mean, it's 70 something degrees and it's just absolutely beautiful here in southern Oklahoma. But we finally got some cool weather. Um, and the unfortunate part about that is, <clears throat> excuse me, once you get that frost, uh, once you get one of those first freezes, uh, that grass starts to die. Um, we've been really lucky because we've had good rain over, rain over the summer. And now that the um, it's cold enough, the grass is starting to die. So what that means is we pick up the feed a little bit. Um, uh, we, we've got to get uh, keep some weight on them. And so we're going to feed them a little bit more um, of some of our grain stuff. Um, and then we will um, give them some hay. So what we're going to use to give the bison this hay is we're going to use a little single bale hay hauler. This thing is handy. It, I bought it last year once I got the bison and I needed it in the winter time to haul hay. Um, but this year we're really lucky because we bailed um, one of our hay pastures for the first time ever and we got 33 bales of hay um, this summer in late July. A lot of natural grass, some Johnson grass in there. But now that we've got our own hay, which is over there, um, we don't have to go very far. Anyways, I've got this little single hay bale hauler. It's, it's pretty neat. Got it on the farm truck here. And uh, it's a uh, it's battery operated. I, I went and bought a car battery and it's all for remote control. Let's take a look. All right, so what we have here is a um, battery operated um, lifter, hay bale lifter and um, a single bale hauler, whatever you want to call it, whatever the name is for it. I don't, I don't care as long as it hauls the bales of hay for me and lifts them up. But uh, this little um, battery operated one is pretty awesome. We got the remote control here in and out um, I can see it there we go but this thing works pretty well um, luckily we don't have to take our bills very far but this is uh, this is pretty handy to to, to get these uh, hay bills moved around for the bison Okay, so you saw me take the, the string off uh, or the wrap. Um, here in southern Oklahoma, um, you, you, you won't see a lot of completely wrapped bales of hay. Um, we just don't have a lot of problems with mold um, necessarily here that much. Um, so we just use these normal wraps. Um, however, you have to get these completely off the bales of hay. You, you can't have any strings left over. 
um, this can be really dangerous. Um, it's great because it, it, it holds these big bales of hay together. However, um, if this stuff gets consumed or gets in a cow, a goat, a sheep, um, or, or our bison, um, this thing can get wrapped up in their intestines and can kill um, you know, any type of livestock really quick. So um, you really gotta make sure that you get all of this string or this wrap, you really have to get this thing out of that bale of hay. No extra strings uh, um, on this at all. Make sure you get everything. We don't wanna have any issues because if, if while they're grazing this hay, um, they'll just accidentally take this and once it goes in their system, um, you're gonna have some, some issues. So make sure you gotta get all this out of there. So there it is right there, the first bale of hay for the bison this year. They'll come over here and and they'll the bull he'll he'll beat this he'll beat this thing up. It's kind of like a big toy for him to 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 beat around on, and uh, they'll rub on it and and it scratch on it and obviously eat it. They love hay, and it's good roughage for them uh, for them to have. And the the good thing about this <clears throat> excuse me this hay is it came straight from um, this land here, straight from this farm, and this is this stuff is just gonna go right back into the earth and the cycle continues for us and the bison do a great job of that um, just like they've done for for hundreds of years so hey guys um, wife and I got the bale of hay set out the bison are way down in the bottom of our pasture so we're gonna go ahead and drive down there check on them and see if we can get them rounded up and to come up here with us and, and let them know hey you got your first bale of hay of the year and see see how they respond to that I've got my body cam here. Just have my GoPro attached to uh, to my chest here, just to kind of free up my hands a little bit, and I'm still get some some filming done. You guys ready for some hay? Come on. This is hay easy. Woo! Come 
Come on! Here they come. going speed up a little bit come on Maya come on Just stop at the gate. That's good right there, hon. Jump over it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just completely whiffed. Just when I didn't think anything would be going on, I turned my back. The bison run in because we fed them. Um, but Eleanor just tried to jump over the bell of hay. So sorry I missed it. I may have got her just laying down right here after because she just completely tried to jump over it, on it. I'm not sure. She was really excited because we got their first bell of hay. Uh, and then she just fell right here next to it. So. Um, Gosh, I wish you guys could have seen that. That's crazy. Well, as you can tell here, already destroyed. You saw what the bull just did. They get pumped whenever um, they get the hay in here. And you can see the first thing they want to do is not come up and eat it like you think they would. No, they want to hit it, rub up against it, beat it up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. It's fun to watch these bison, um, you know, get excited about something. Just like us going down in the pasture, kind of rounding them up, checking on them, making sure everything is good, and then uh, trying to get them to come up to the corral where we keep our bales of hay. And you can see the excitement of them following us up the pasture and uh, and, and running and stuff. It, it's so fun to watch them just, just run. And uh, it, these are majestic animals, and, and when they get to running like that, you know, it, it's really fun to, to see them run. But... Um, they're all doing great. The calves are getting so big. And, uh, you know, it's that time of the year. The leaves are going to start falling and uh, a cool weather. It's been gorgeous. We love this time of the year in Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, it's just a fun time right now. And, and I think the bison are feeling good. And, and they love their cold weather. They're ready for that cold weather uh, to settle in and that, and that heat to escape. Because uh, you guys know that, um, or if you don't know, bison love cold weather and they uh they face the storm when it hits so but 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Got some exciting stuff. Our alley's being built, so that's really good. And uh, down in Texas, and um, we'll head down there in probably a month or so to uh, to get our alley. Uh, and then as far as our shoot goes, um, we're gonna get a shoot that's located um, here in our state of Oklahoma. Um, and then we're gonna get this thing cleared off and get our get our handling system all set up and uh, everything will be good to go. And um, the sale's coming up November 2nd. If you're around in Oklahoma, uh, plan on coming to that. It, it's a show. Um, right now we've got about 150 bison that are supposed to be there. And so if you're around or, or close, come to the sale. It's pretty fun. If you need any more information, get in contact with me and I'll let you know uh, times and, and all that stuff. good stuff. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I know you're probably wondering where the heck am I? Well, today's gonna be a little bit different. We are at the cell barn where all the bison are gonna come in to the cell barn today and we're gonna get ready for our cell tomorrow. Um, it's quite a show and all these bison come from all different, you know, parts of parts of Oklahoma or this region and, and they all come in here at these pens and get sorted out and then tomorrow is the sale. So um, today I'm gonna to show you a little bit about how all this goes down and how all these bison come in here safely and are put into these pens. It's a show, hope you're ready. So here's the first trailer for today. It's got 33 cows in it. So we're gonna unload these cows, work them one at a time, and get them sorted out for pins. Every animal that is unloaded has to go through the proper procedure before it can be sorted out in the livestock facilities. One, it's given an identification number called a back tag. That's the yellow round sticker placed on their left hip. And that's just a simple identification number to use throughout the sale. They're also gonna be identified of what sex they are, how old they are, to be accordingly placed in the stock barn in certain pens. What I'm doing is I am giving them their Bangs vaccination metal ID tag. And it's every metal tag that I'm giving in their right ear is a different identification number for every individual bison. And that is recorded so that every new owner of that bison will have the proper identification number, which is the middle tag in that ear. It takes a lot of work to sort these animals out and work them properly and safely and handle them. All, all, every one of these people that are helping through this are members of the Bison Association or just volunteers, family and friends. Having the animals sorted out throughout the barn makes the sale go by a whole lot easier and it's easier for buyers to come by and look 
uh, in different parts of the barn where um, different ages and genders are located. So this is called a back tag. These tags go on the bison whenever they come off the trailer into the sale barn. And this is just a um, marker or identification number to use just for the sale. This, uh, it's put on with a little bit of glue. It's put on there. the back kit, as you can see right here. And it's just an easy identification um, for the sale. It'll fall off eventually, or when you run them through a chute, you can take it off of them. bison. Got everything from cows to bulls to old cows, young cows, heifers, calves, you name it. Hey guys, so 
where I'm at right now is the ring, and this is where the auction will go down. As you can tell, um, everybody, a lot of the buyers will be in here, and um, the bison will come through. They'll come through the ring, and they'll hang out in here for a while. People will take a look. Uh, you'll have the auctioneer um, talking about the animal when they first come in, and then also um, they'll talk about the uh, producer a little bit, where are the bison from, and um, then the auction will start for each animal. Sometimes they do it by herds. It could be a small herd. It could be, it could be uh, a couple of, of bison. It could be just one big bull. Um, there's different classes and categories, so um, it just depends. But uh, this is where it'll all go down, and this is where, um, you know, maybe maybe I could get some more bison. I don't know. We'll see. I bought both of my quapaw heifers from here last year, and so um, we'll see. We're, we're thinking about it. We, we may get a couple more to add to the cross timber herd. Well, hey, guys. It's sale day here in Sulphur, Oklahoma, and... It's time to go in here and check out these bison and see what prices are going for and see maybe if we can get some bison today. Stay tuned. <laughs> So one of the cool things about these sales is people from all over Oklahoma um, bring their animals here to sell and you just never know where the lineage is and what where some of those bison were purchased from uh, and their offspring where do they lead back to in other ranches there's these bison here at this sale could go back to any any other herd there's no telling where what herd across the country they could come from and so it's really neat you're seeing tons of different animals from different ranches and, and different producers uh, which could be all over the country essentially with these bison here. So in total, I think there was about 113 animals. Last year was the first time we held this sale for the Oklahoma Bison Association. And I think there was right at close to 70. This year we had 113, which is really good. Um, so, you know, that's it's good to have more animals, more, uh, more advertising gets out every year and year. And so we always want more animals and we always want more buyers at these sales. It's good for the bison industry and it's good for the Oklahoma Bison Association. And hey guys, so sales over and now this is the holding area where all the bison have been sorted out into specific pens for buyers. So um, when the animals are ran through the actual ring and they're auctioned off and then you have a, a buyer, um, they have, they're given a number and that number kind of certain pens um, where the buyer um, has bought certain animals and then they try to keep those animals together that the buyer has purchased and so all the workers are back here sorting out all the bison as they come through the ring and come out after they've been purchased they sort them out to get ready to get them ready to be shipped out and so that's what we're going to do next is we're going to get all these trailers backed up here and we're gonna load these bison up and so um, the buyers can take home uh, their new bison. Okay, so check this out. We bought two heifers and guess what? They came from the Qualpaw Nation. <laughs> we bought uh, two more heifers um, in the auction today, my wife and I did. Um, so they're from uh, one of the same producers up in the Qualpaw Nation. So we will have two new quapaw heifers coming in these are yearling heifers so which that means that they're one year old or more and hopefully by next summer they'll be able to breed and then the year after that they'll be able to have babies so two new additions to the family and what we're going to do is we are going to load them up and we're going to take them to the farm and join the cross timber certain
This is the first morning of the two new additions to the herd. We've got two new quapaw heifers that we purchased from the sale yesterday and they have joined the herd. And everything is going good. They came up and they ate this morning with the rest of the herd and I think they're adapting really well. So I basically have a four quapaw females in this herd now since we've added the two um, heifers and basically if you don't know what the quapaw when I talk about quapaw there's the quapaw Indian um, Native American nation up in northeastern Oklahoma and they uh, produce a lot of good bison and last year um, at this bison sale I bought two bred heifers um, quapaw and Dakota and they had the calves and now I just purchased two yearling heifers and um, they don't have any babies they're not bred um, someday hopefully they will be and so we have four quapaw females and two quapaw bull calves so one of the reasons we didn't just put these heifers out into the big pasture we went ahead and pulled them in some of our small lots here this is kind of our hay lot where we we bring in the bells of hay like you saw in my previous video so we brought the herd in we got them out of the big pasture and we put them in here so that we could um, bring in the new heifers and because when, when you bring new animals in you don't just want to let them take off running and so uh, we want them to come in here kind of get used to uh, the new environment the new herd and, and kind of slowly uh, give them a chance to adapt to the new situation that they're in so they're gonna hang out in one of our smaller lots um, where we feed them and where we give them hay and they can hang out here for a while and get used to the, to the we have our two new heifers they're getting along pretty well we still have the back tags on them they stay there for a while they're doing pretty good they'll make their way in the herd we'll do the next couple of weeks is we're gonna keep you updated on how these heifers um, kind of grow into this herd and how they adapt to this new herd a new environment we've already fed them this morning they'll get used to our feed um, and hay they already have been eating hay where they came from and so it'll just be a process of them getting to know everyone in the herd these are very social animals and um, you know they it takes a little bit of time for them to adapt to not only a new environment but to a new family as well and so that'll occur you know here over time but so far everything's going great they've accepted them um, they're gonna be you know uh, lower on the totem pole and um, uh, kind of that hierarchy system that I've already talked about just because they're they're new and they're the youngest uh, besides the two calves uh, but the mamas protect them so we're going to keep you updated on the process of of uh, having the addition of these two new heifers well hey guys that's it for today i hope that you guys uh, got to learn a little bit about how uh, bison sales go um luckily it's in my hometown of sulfur which is probably about uh, 10 or 12 miles from uh, where the farm is here so but i hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process of how everything goes um, it all ended pretty smoothly and uh, you know all the the buyers come in and picked up all their their bison and sorted them out and got them loaded on the trailers and they headed home to join their new herds a lot of people uh, were there were buying bison for the first time they are buying a starter herd some of them are buying um, bison to just add to their original herd which is what I did um, we even had a buyer from Montana buy a whole bunch of cows and they're being shipped out uh, today to, to go all the way up to Montana. So a different range of people, a different range of producers. 
and that are doing different things with their ranches or with their bison so um but pretty exciting stuff we've got two more bison to join the herd and uh some heifers uh, because we didn't have baby heifers or, ba or baby um, calf heifers this year um, this is kind of a good way to replace uh, is buying one-year-old heifers so what that means is next summer we should um, have some of these uh, heifers bred at least our two new ones and then they'll be having babies the next year so it takes a little bit but you know it's nice to grow your herd and have more heifers you can't have enough heifers um, which means more calves so thank you guys for following us um, you can look us up on facebook or instagram I've already split this barrel in half. I've cut it with a um, sawzall. And now I'm gonna use um, some wood frames. I got some two by fours treated and I have a four by four post that I'm gonna use to build us a feed trough so we can have um, more room for our bison herd to eat as, um, as we feed them every day. Farmer's DIY right here. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty Baker. As you guys know, we bought two heifers last weekend at the Oklahoma Bison Association sale in Sulphur, Oklahoma. And we brought home two new additions to the family. And one of the issues that we're having is, it's not a major issue, but it's something we need to take care of, is we need to get more feeding troughs. Um, because of the hierarchy system, those heifers are the youngest in the group, minus the two little bull calves we have. Um, they're kind of on the lower end of that. And so part of our feeding program and the way we do it, um, they get kind of shoved to the side a little bit. And so with their first week here, they've been doing great. They've been eating hay. They've been eating some feed, but they're uh, getting shoved off of, of the feed troughs uh, by the older ones, especially the bull and our two biggest uh, mama cows. So what we're gonna do today is I am gonna use these old uh, barrels here and I'm gonna make a feed trough out of these. And so our heifers and you know, whoever wants to eat, use this, will use this um, to feed out of. But I'm gonna use these, I've already sliced them in half and I'm gonna make a feed trough out of them. Stay tuned. Alright, 
We are almost finished. It's taken a minute to figure this out. Never built one of these. My wife and I have had to do some engineering, but uh, nobody said farmers were uh, great carpenters carpenters is that what you call them whatever they're called nobody ever said that farmers were great carpenters so but we're getting it we just hope it lasts a long time that's the purpose of it and we want uh, the bison to eat a little bit more peacefully without being ran off and make sure that they're all getting the equal amount of feed that they're supposed to be getting let's wrap this up beautiful sunset bison been watching us for the past couple hours and then to our backs we hear some rumble in the grass and turn around and look and there's a herd of deer behind us so it's kind of kind of cool to have the deer and have the bison just out here hanging out with us and then you got maya who's worked so hard today too tired okay so it looks like we're done um i need to clean the inside of it out but um <coughs> It's not perfect. I think um, when we build another one again, at some point, we do a couple things different, but it's pretty awesome. We'll see how it holds up. Bison can be really rough on um, equipment. They can be really rough on feed troughs. And so, you know, this was cheap. I mean, this was under 20 bucks. I had some, I had some deck screws left over. I had some finish screws left over and then, uh, you know, I had a friend give me one of these tubs and I just split it in half and we just put it together. My wife and I put it together in, in probably less than two hours. And that's the first time I've ever done it. And um, it's going to work great. I'm going to put some, drill some holes in it. When it rains, it'll drain out in the bottom. But other than that, we'll see how it works. We'll keep you updated. Well, hey guys, uh, this morning we're gonna feed the bison. We, my wife and I built that trough yesterday and then we set it out in kind of an isolated area. And we're gonna see if we can get those heifers to come up and eat um, the grain. We're feeding more grain right now. And that's mainly because uh, it's winter time. There's, there's not a lot of grass on the ground, which is fine. Uh, we're always putting out hay. Uh, we've already put out three or four bales of hay and. Um, since that first uh, video of, of, of me putting out hay, uh, they're eating a lot of hay. But we're going to uh, go ahead and feed them and see if we can get some of those new heifers isolated where they can um, get the amount of feed that they need. But they're still trying to acclimate to uh, their new environment and, and the new herd. So there's some hierarchy going on right now with these herds or with these animals and um you know they're trying to find their place and i think they're on the lower end right now so it just takes a little bit of, of figuring out when it comes to um how to eat and, and where to eat you know because the the bull he he eats where he wants to eat um he's the most dominant and then you've got the two quapaw heifers which kind of run the roost also as well so um Hopefully, they'll come up and eat. Let's give it a go. Hey, big boy. Got all them cockerbirds in you. You guys ready to eat? See, you can already tell. We've got the main herd up here ready to eat. And then... There's the two new heifers right there. Not uh, anxious to come up here real quick, um, but that's why we're doing this is hopefully um, adding that other trough. And I probably am gonna have to make another one or go buy another one um, just for room so that we can get those new heifers to come up and eat and get the food that they need.
can see the heifers. We've got one in the back, or both of them are in the back. They're close to the feed, but haven't came up quite yet. Who you have up here is you've got peaches and you got Eleanor. Sorry, it's so windy. Um, what we're gonna do right now is these heifers have not been out in the big pasture and we're gonna let them out in the big pasture right now. They're already ready to go. <laughs> Here we go. There they go, in the big pasture. I love watching them come out uh, for the first time. We, we've had them locked up in one of our smaller lots for a while because uh, just try to get them acclimated to everything. Uh, but it's so fun when they get so excited to get out in the big pasture where they belong and, and let them roam around. So it's, it's always fun to watch. Hey guys that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video of just doing you know some random stuff around the farm we my wife and i put a feeder together yesterday and probably put it together in about uh, i don't know probably two hours with us two doing it <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm glad she helped me do that and you know i'm saving a lot of money by buying one of those instead of a feed trough so um pardon the wind this is the great plains and you know, I know some people are like, he needs to work on uh, his sound issue in the wind. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm not a professional photographer, but uh, this is part of Oklahoma. It's always windy here, and we live out on the, the plains. So um, right there at the edge, actually, of the Great Plains and the eastern woodlands of Oklahoma. So, guys, thank you for everything. Thank you for the support. Thank you for following us. Got a lot of random stuff done on the farm. We're getting that slab cleaned off. And here in the next couple weeks, we're gonna get our handling system and we're gonna get the squeeze chute. Once we get that whole concrete pad cleaned off and we're gonna have a pull out bison handling system so we can work our bison, uh, hopefully towards the middle or uh, late, I say middle, it is the middle of November, geez. Uh, late November, maybe around Thanksgiving. Thank you guys.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. As you guys know, we've got two more additions to the herd. We've got uh, two young heifers. Did you fix it? Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Um, we're going to do something these next couple of days. Um, it's going to be a little bit different. As you guys know, I've got a concrete slab that I'm about to get ready to put our bison handling chute on. Notice it's been cleaned off. I still have to do a couple of things to it, but it is almost ready to go. But what my wife and I are going to go do is we are going to pick up the squeeze chute and then we are also gonna drive to Texas to pick up our custom made alley system. I got two eight foot sections, um, make a total of a 16 foot alley. And we're gonna take that and our squeeze chute and we're gonna put it right over here on this big th thick uh, concrete slab. So we've got some exciting stuff happening um, and we're gonna get all this bison handling system put together and get it ready to go so we can use it here pretty soon. Stay tuned guys. All right, guys, you see it right here. We have our squeeze chute, Toro squeeze chute. I got it here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. I've been talking to these guys um, for about three months now. I came and looked at them once and I really liked them. It is a heavy duty squeeze chute and you know, gotta have that for the bison. So we've got it loaded and we're gonna take it to Doc Parsons, uh, the bison guy I always work with. Uh, the vet and he is gonna build a cage for the fun of it that we have to have for our bison when we work them. Uh, we can't just use this normal um, head gate here. We've got to have a special cage on the front uh, like you probably saw in one of my other videos at the livestock sale or at the bison sale in Sulphur. 
uh, you've got to have that crash gate on the front for bison um, because they kind of will be aggressive and will, can run try to run through it so got to have that cage on there when we work them so doc is going to build us a cage and we're going to leave it there a while for him before we take it to the house and get it set up Good morning guys, um, we are in Lubbock, Texas and it is super windy out here, always is. We are in far west Texas. Uh, we are about to go to Seminole, Texas, about an hour uh, southwest of Lubbock and we are going to get our um, alleys, alley system and we've got the trailer rocking and rolling, the wife and I are um, about to head out. So um, we're going to go pick up our alley systems. Alright, well hey guys, look what we got. We've got an alley system. We have a heavy duty bison handling system custom made out here in Seminole, Texas. Far west Texas, southwest of Lubbock. Um, I, I called and talked to a guy named Willie and he really helped me out. He drew up a plan uh, of what we could do for our bison um, and the alley to design he did a great job and um, he put this together for us him and his guys over here at JB uh, pipe Seminole Texas but look at this this is heavy duty we've got sliding gates uh, it's just gonna be awesome I'm really excited about it it is heavy duty this is this is heavy duty pipe it's gonna be great for our bison um, it's gonna it's gonna make things go a whole lot uh, safer and smoother and we're gonna be able to work our bison um, at our farm at the cross timbers farm in, in sulfur oklahoma and we don't have to take them to the vet anymore and hopefully things go better with that and um, we're gonna take this system home got a little bit of drive go back to southern oklahoma and um we're excited to get it back there and set it up. So, Chop it up. We're almost getting there. We're almost getting there. We're getting there. That's what I meant. Meanwhile, the sloppy mess. Bison are still just chilling.
So now we got them on here. The concrete pad we're using is not exactly level. This is an old concrete pad used for the yeah, dairy barn. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> so we're gonna have to shim it and make it level and get these straight where ah, exactly we doing? want them now. All right. Yeah, that ain't too bad. This ain't too bad. It's a little off. Ain't too bad. Uh, the shoes are good there. The shoes is buttoned right up next to them. Well, yeah. you don't, uh, don't you have a palpation cage? I don't have to have that. That's pretty. Got all the bison fed. They're doing good. Everybody's busy eating. So, but. What I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so we set our alley down, our two eight foot alleys that we got from West Texas. Um, what you've noticed probably is like, man, there's a lot of different uh, videos and stuff going on. Well, um, this last, this video is basically a combination of several days. We had a lot going on. Of course, it's Thanksgiving and um as a teacher i get the holidays off um woo so um we used a lot of that time to work on bison stuff and cabin stuff and family time and thanksgiving and those things so it's a lot of balancing and uh trying to keep my wife uh, happy too i know she bless her heart she's so patient with me um, but we are hustling to get this bison um, handling system set up and we're getting a lot closer so I just want to talk to you a little bit about that all right so I'm basically standing at the head gate of where um, the bison are gonna come down the old alley of the dairy this is kind of what you would call a the tub or the end of the U and they're gonna come through here and they're gonna come out and come straight down this alley. So, so got I know it's been a, a week long process of, of of driving from here to here, picking up stuff, picking up by, uh, the um, alley systems, picking up a squeeze chute that's over at um, Doc Parsons place in Stratford. My vet guy, the guy who I bought my bison from, he's going to put that crash gate on the front and that chute's going to sit right here on the front of this. And so that's at his facility right now and he's getting that built for us uh, they've got to have that crash gate like I explained um, so we can work them but it's a process it takes a lot of work and, and and a lot of time and patience but we are getting a lot closer and so just stay with us this is to be continued um, and next time we'll have hopefully a squeeze shoot up here and we will have a full system going and then we'll show you our first process of working the bison here at the cross timbers ranch thank you guys well i hope you guys have enjoyed the process of getting this handling system put together we still have a ways to go um it it, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of effort from from other um from from other people uh, my stepdad has helped us um, my wife she's been very patient and and helping she's out here she's been driving the tractor around and helping as much as she can um, neighbor let us borrow his big John Deere tractor to lift these um, shoots off with 
our, um, these alley systems off with and so it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work and um, it'll all be worth it because once we get it done um, we can work the bison see how it goes the first time and then make slight adjustments to our setup and that may be um, moving panels around or building a little bit more fencing or, or corral panels or anything like that so um i hope you enjoyed the the process of of going and seeing um you know the effort that it takes to raise these animals and my i just have a small farm of them you know here um and so uh we're getting there as a startup bison um farm we're getting a lot closer but once you have a handling system Things are going to be a lot better, I promise. And that way we don't have to take them to the vet or any place like that um, to get them work. So uh, it's a long process, but we're getting there. And you got to see that over just a week right there of, of traveling around um, all over Oklahoma and over in West Texas. Thank you, guys. Um, check out our website. Um, at crosstimbersbison.com you can check us out on facebook you can check us out on instagram and you can still go to the store um, i've got some hats up there i got some new hats coming you may want to check that out and we still have our t-shirts up there thank you guys Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. So what we're going to do today is um, we are out of feed. As you can tell, um, I just put out my last bucket of feed for these bison and um, they're giving me that look. So it's time to, it's time to get some feed and it's winter time. So we're feeding more uh, grain and we're feeding more hay as well. Um, just because like you've seen in my last videos, uh, there, there's just not a lot of grass left to eat for these bison and and if there is they're gonna find it and they're gonna consume it so um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about right here this is um, a one ton bulk feeder uh, feed buggy whatever you want to call it. it's called several different things but let's take a look at this right here this is it's pretty handy you've probably seen it in some of my videos uh, of me feeding out of it but it's really handy. These have become very popular here in the past couple of years. It seems like you're starting to see a whole lot more of them. And um, I, they're just easy. Um, you can buy bulk feed cheaper. And matter of fact, the feed that I get that we feed our bison, you can't buy it in a, in a bag. So what we do is we, we have to get it bulk. And um, I think Daniel from Arnold's Family Homestead feeds the same um, feed to uh, to his goats and his, and his critters as well. But um, and he has a bulk feeder too. But um, so in order to get that feed, we had to have this bulk feeder, and plus it just lasts longer. And now we have a herd of ten bison, so um, now we're putting on some more feed every day. We're adding more feed, 
So it's just way better to have one of these one of these things. I've had it for about a year now, and um, I'll talk to you a little bit more about it later. But we're gonna go pick up feed over in Stillwater Milling. It's where it's kind of the central location down here in, in southern Oklahoma to get feed, at least um, in where we're from. There's lots of people that get feed here, and they have a lot of variety. But we're gonna go pick up feed. It's probably about 25 minutes away from the farm, so it's super convenient. All right, let's go. All right, welcome to the inside of Pearl, the truck. Um, there's a lot going over here, a lot going on over here at the mill. You can see right here, this is the scales, and this is where I'm going to pull up, and I've got to weigh everything on the scales. Um, my buggy's empty, and then I'm going to uh, go inside and get a form and get my weight. And then I'm gonna go get my feed and go back on the scale, weigh how much feed I got, and I'm gonna go in and get my ticket and pay for my feed. A little bit of process, but it's all right. I don't know what the heck is going on. Just got the tractor out here and cleaning up the pasture a little bit and for some reason the blood got flowing and they started acting a little bit different and I'm not sure. The blood started rolling and they do not like what's going on. There's some old fence out here in one of the pastures. I'm just trying to clean it up and they're not used to this tractor and all this stuff I'm, I'm moving so they don't know how to handle it. So this is uh, pretty funny to watch.
these bison are so curious. They're like goats. I may have said that before, but they are really like goats. I come out here in the pasture and they just come alive. They've been napping and hanging out and I interrupted their nap. And um, I mean, they come out here and got a smell of everything and check everything out. It's like this guy back here. Doesn't need to be playing in barbed wire. Exactly. Stirring up stuff. <laughs> These animals are so curious. Oh, jeez. itch. Whoa. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for lowering the front end. Loader there. Peaches. Dunbar, you just want to fight with something. else hanging out. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's good just to get a lot of work done. Um, during football season, I don't have a lot of spare time. It takes a lot of time from me. Um, but, you know, got to keep the bison fed. We're upping up their feed some more. Um, it's winter time, less grass. And then also, we've got a larger herd now. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed it, seeing the process, how we do things. And then when we have a little bit of extra time, time trying to get some other stuff done around the farm using a little tractor um, that we have. So thank you guys. Um, thanks for following. Thanks for all the, the comments. You guys are really positive. Um, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. You can check out our uh, website, crosstimberbison.com uh, for merchandise or anything like that. Thank you guys. Four, four, one, two, three. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, won't it? Okay, uh, start counting. So.